So next, I would like to show you how to attach your binding by machine. I unfortunately cannot hand sew anymore. So I always put all my bindings on, both the front and the back, by machine. And I'm just going to show you how to do it using the Brother machine. So first off, I have my binding made. It's two and a half inch strip, fold it in half. And this is the back of my quilt. So when I sew it on, here's the front of my quilt. My binding is going to come around like this. And I'm going to do one mitered corner for you and show you how to do that by machine. And then we're going to stitch it on top. So when you have the move it foot on, if I go to the edge here, so you can see where my needle is and the edge. That's not a quarter inch. That's probably a good half inch. So I'm going to move my needle over as far as I can go. And on this machine, it's a seven. So at seven, if I put that down, it's going to be a good three eighths. And that's typically what your walking foot or your move it foot's going to put your binding on. Most people think it's a, a quarter inch, but it's actually three eighths, which works out just fine. Um, I've never had a problem with doing a 3 8 seam. So we're going to go ahead and sew it. Now I'm putting on the back first. I'm just going to lift up so I can pull out my top thread. Let's keep going. Okay, I'm going to go up a little bit more till I hit the corner here. And I'm going to show you where all the magic happens. Okay, here's the edge of my fabric. Here's what you're going to do is take your ruler and I want you to measure from this edge here 3 eighths up. And this is going to tell me where I need to stop. Put the foot up. Now I'm going to make a line. I'm using a friction pen. So if I ever press it, use a hot iron, or even a blow dryer, the mark will disappear. Mind you, this is in the seam, so I'm not going to see it. So that's my 3 8 So you're going to mark 3 8 from this edge up. And I'm going to stitch right to there, and I'm going to stop with my needle down. Go slow. Two. One more stitch, I think. Perfect. My needle is down. It's actually right on the line that I marked. And I'm going to pivot. See where my needle is? And I want to stitch right off this edge. So I'm going to stitch a 45 degree line. So I'm going to stitch straight to here. And I'm going to go right off. And I'm right off. Let's turn it around. Right. So you can see. So this is... From the edge, I went up 3 eighths, put a mark there so I knew where to stop, and then I went straight off to the edge, so that's a 45 degree angle. Now I'm going to make my fold. Do my fold. So you can see I'm even here, and I'm even here. And it doesn't matter with the uh, the thread, because my thread, I have not cut my thread at all. 
Mm. Now I'm just going to stitch down this way. And I'll do one more mitered corner here for you. So I'm getting to the edge. Want to be careful. I'm going to mark up 3 8 Of course, if you were actually sewing your binding on at a quarter inch, you'd go up a quarter. But I'm sewing mine at 3 8 Let's get in there. I've always thought it would be easier to mark this before I start stitching it, but when you're putting your binding on, your uh, where the binding stitches out, it can move. So I always wait till I'm closer to the edge. Perfect. I hit that mark I made. Pivot. And I can see the corner of my fabric is right there. So I'm lining right up here. Straight on, straight off. One sec. And my needle is off to the right a bit, so I gotta make sure I count for that. Okay. Foot up. Let's do our fold. Again, see? Right where that mark is. Right off the edge. Let's fold it. A good way to learn how to do this is make a bunch of placemats. And then you'll get really good at binding by machine. Let's just go down a bit here. Okay, good enough. So if we take a look at our sewing. So I started here. And I said it was a 3 8 I made my mark down here. Needle down. I pivot right off the edge. Turned it. Did my nice fold. So you fold it up and fold it down. Still with my thread connected. I went all the way down. Again, I marked my 3 8 Stopped at the 3 8 Stitched right off the edge. Right in the point there and then came this way. So let's turn it to the front now. So here's the front. Let's get rid of some of these threads here. I can see where I did my sewing right here. So I know that's where my fabric was turned, like that. I can put a little pin in, but I gotta worry about my mitered corner. So when I look underneath, this mitered corner is going this way. So I want this mitered corner to go the other opposite way. You always want your corners to nest. In order to do that, they have to go the other way. Look at that. It's a beautiful mitered corner. This is where you could use the clips, pins, whatever works best for you. So pinning that, let's pin up here. A lot of times I just use my seam ripper. I don't even pin to begin with. So again, here's a corner. So my fold is going that way. So when I go up here, right, my fold is the opposite way. Okay, I'm going to go grab one more pin here. So now everything is pinned. Now you want to stitch this down. 
and this is the top of my quilt. So some tricks of the trade that I use. Again, I would use a very thin thread on top. So I'm going to change it to my 80 weight thread. So I really don't want people to see my stitching on top. So again, I use my Deco Bob 80 weight from Wonderfill. What I have found that if I use a blind hem stitch, so it's going to go straight, straight, take a bite of the binding, stitch, stitch, bite, stitch, stitch. I find that I get the kind of finish I want on the top. So I'm going to pick the blind hem stitch, still keeping my move it foot on here. Get that corner there. This is when you want to have your stiletto handy. <clears throat> so our blind hem stitch on this one is 1-15. So I'm just going to take this pin out and use my trusty stiletto. So I want my fabric right on. This is the stitching line from the bottom. So let's go forward a bit. Straight. There's that bite. Now that bite was a big bite. Let me do that again here for you. So stitch, bite. That's a big bite. So let's just adjust the width of my bite. It's at 3.4, sorry, 3.5. Let's go to 2.5. And this is the kind of information I have on a sticky by my machine all the time. But then you could always save it. That's a much nicer bite. So I'm going to go all the way down to where my so you can see my mitered corner is coming up. I'm going to get right down to there. Pivot. Really? Up. And now I know it's going to take that bite, so I'm just going to back up my fabric just so it bites that fold. Yeah. Now sometimes you have a fair bit of fabric in that corner. This is where you put your foot up. And I will literally put my stiletto in where that mitered corner is just to help it along. Okay, we need to get that pin out. So I usually just work in that inch up and I use my stiletto to hold that. So for children's quilts for babies, this is the preferred way. We used to do a large uh, neonatal quilt drive every year. And because of the industrial washing machines, everything had to be machine. Because hand stitching your binding on would never stand up to the industrial washing machines. Let's get rid of this pin. I'm coming up to my corner again. Ooh, bite ended up right in that corner there. You can see my stitching is right here. I just need to bring that up a bit. And the nice thing too with the move it foot, they tend to not get stuck at the corner there because the move it foot is moving on top. Go, and we'll go a little bit and then we'll 
it will stop. Okay. There is the top. Now I've used a very light gray on the top. You could use a color matching on that if you want. But I wanted you to actually see my stitches. So let's turn this over. It's actually lined right up because I had folded it. This side was right on my stitching line. That way I knew I matched it. Look at that mitered corner. And that's how you bind by machine.